Okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to get started, and we might have a couple more come in. Um, there is coffee in the back. It should be done any minute if you are cold and want to warm up. But um, it sounds like a lot of you folks actually went to the site plan, uh, the site walk. So really appreciate that, and um, thanks for coming out in the cold. Um, my name is Laurie Rossio, and we're here today uh, along with my husband David, who you might have met if you did the site walk. Um, we'd like to welcome you to the meeting to discuss the proposed development at Exit 17. Um, today's meeting is one step towards meeting a recommendation from the Planning Board. And it's to develop a master plan for the site, and this is specifically our city <coughs> planner's words, generated with participation and input from the community. That's what you all are here for today. Um, so we thank you very much for coming out, because we couldn't do this without the public. We'd like to recognize some special guests that are here today. We have Councilor Brent Todd. We have uh, Councilor um, Alan Hirschlag is over there at the table. And um, the city planner, as I mentioned, uh, Tom City Planner, Heather Shank, is also here. And then helping us out on the professional side is Rob Hoover from TF Moran, who you might have also met on the sidewalk. Um, we also want to acknowledge that Concord Community TV is taping this meeting today and if you don't want to be on TV just just let us know but basically he's going to focus on whatever is said up front and we'll try to repeat any questions or comments that you have so that all of the focus can just be up here and, and you're not personally on TV um, but if you have any issues please, please let us know um, it's not being live streamed by the way this is something that we may add later on so that the planning board can take a look at it just some housekeeping items. We're going to try to wrap up by 5.30, and I think given the size of the room, we should be able to accomplish that. We do have pizza coming in at 5. And as I mentioned before, we have water and iced tea in the coolers. Coffee is, is almost done. Bathrooms are down the hallway there. Men's and women's rooms are both down there. And there's sign-in cards, as I mentioned, on the table, and we really appreciate it. Um, you know, the planning board, again, is looking to make sure that we have public input, and the way to demonstrate that is to to find out who was here at the meeting, and the signing cards will be our way of telling who was there. So feel free to fill those out. Too far. Here we go. Here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to start out with the neighborhood orientation, uh, go over the background and goals for the meeting. We're going to discuss any uh, concerns you might have about Route 4 and Whitney Road and where that stands. The Whitney Road extension is also a, a project in the area that you might want to be aware of. And then we're going to spend most of our day doing visioning and site planning exercises that will be led by uh, Rob Hoover from TF Moran. Then we'll wrap it up, find out what we've discovered during the exercises, and tell you what the next steps are for the project. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dave, who will discuss the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Dave Rossio. I have a memory from the site walk. Just thought I'd give you folks just a, a quick overview of um, the neighborhood, where we're at. Um, it's sort of some characteristics of the site. Maybe I'll just go up and point to it. Hopefully, not getting in the way. Well, I'll use the pointer here. Maybe better. You got a better way to do it? Updates. No, 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 no updates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be here for weeks, right? All right. So, uh, one Whitney Road is actually the gas station. Where I'm just, this little hand here is going to be sort of me pointing around. So, Wheel Raider sites here. This cleared area you can see. There's a tree line right there. We this little paved road is where we walked up and then we sort of hung out here for a few minutes and chatted and then walked over here into the back little sort of a. A trail that went to another cleared area and then we went a little further to a ravine that we looked out and over so the property is bounded then by Route 4 there uh, the southbound entrance ramp to the interstate highway there there's a railroad which you can kind of see runs all the way down there that's a sort of eastern bound of the property there's a, a stream here uh, a brook actually which is roughly the bound on the southern end and then it sort of wraps around the Wheel of Radar property in an L shape, hitting Whitney Road there, and then running right up to the intersection of Whitney Road and Route 4. The site in, in total is about 42 acres. There's eight or nine acres or so here that's sort of unusable because of that steep slope in the, um, the city's buff buffer. 
that we were talking about. The bluff buffer also impacts some area back here. And then the total acreage then we're talking about of this L-shaped lot is maybe say 42 less eight, maybe it could be say 32, 33 acres of usable land. 2.2 acres is leased to Extramart at the corner and the road that we were walking up was intended to be a shared drive. Uh, so it's an easement, which then allows other uses to go fill in the side and behind them, uh, talking about the gas station use. <clears throat> so we expect all access and traffic to go beyond that exit only driveway on the gas station and go beyond. Um, access to, this question came up during a site walk, can you have direct access to Route 4? Not really feasible as the Department of Transportation built this road without any points of access. I'm talking about Route 4. And that's a situation which exists and extends to about, well, it's about 2.2 miles actually beyond the interstate highway. So there's no private driveways on this road all the way until you get beyond where Route 3 intersects it in uh, Boston. So the other sort of parts of the neighborhood that we should maybe talk about Whitney Road goes to here right now, which is the um, sort of the driveway around Boyce Highlands. And then it, it sort of fades away into a dirt road, continues here, hooks up to a, a former alignment of Hannah Dustin Road. This is Hannah Dustin today. It used to actually hop over the river, a little bridge that's out now. So it runs along like this, and the Whitney Road extension per the city the plan was to send it down beyond Boyce Highlands, over that same brook that we were talking about, run along here, there's still pavement actually that exists out here, which is the former Hannah Dustin Road. And then the idea was to send it over to this point and then be parallel to the interstate highway and immediately adjacent to the railroad. And that would run all the way to Seawalls Falls Road. And I'm trying to zoom out with this little guy. All right, I'm getting there. So this here is Concord Monitor. Seawalls Falls Road is right here, and that's the new bridge that just went in. So the first section of the driveway of the Concord Monitor is actually a two-lane road. And the idea, with the idea and the plan was to have that road extend all the way up here and eventually lead to the back end of Whitney Road as it exists today. So that's the future. I'm not sure exactly when, but that is the plan. There is already a water line which runs from Seawalls Falls and it goes all the way up here. And you may have noticed a hydrant right at the intersection there. This building here has sprinklers. The water that go, would go to these sprinklers and the water that we drink here comes all the way down this and comes from Seawalls Falls Road. And that's uh, adequate enough to serve a large commercial development here. Sewer has been extended. Uh, Laurie and I paid to do that from the driveway here of the wheelbarrow facility down to the gas station. And when we did that, we sized it to be large enough to accommodate a large development of this property as well. That was a comment actually, a question that came up during the site walk. This is how far away water and sewer is. Um, any other questions about sort of the neighborhood and how the site's situated? Or any other sort of infrastructure questions? The neighbor, and so show us the, near, the, the lot owned by the, all the towns. Oh, sure. Let me zoom in a little bit to that. There is a 40-acre tract. Well, yeah, let's, um, let me, this one? All right, you're better at this than I am. That's probably in there, right? Um. We're going to find a tax map. Yeah. What was the question? The question was, there's a, there's a tract of land which is industrially zoned. It's about 40 acres in size, and it's immediately abutting this track that we're talking about, and also about wheel reader. So it's this one right here. Oops, sorry. 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 We'll get there. Is that where the recycling was going to go? Yep. There you go. Back up one. There All right. So here's wheel reader. Here's the lot that we've been talking about, and this is the, the sort of part of it. All this is 42 acres. This is a 40 acre tract. It even has a little cleared area here. I don't know what was going on there in the, in the far past. Anyway. There was the plan to, was to extend Whitney Road here. This has all been approved, by the way. And they were going to have a driveway off of here in a 75,000 square foot building with all kinds of site circulation 
And from what I understand, Jim Presher was telling me he's a running that show. There's an eight acre tract which is going to be available that he was uh, going to sell. Now the whole thing is for sale. That has direct access to the railroad, whereas, as we were talking about on the site walk, our property has this big ravine that drops back down and then back up again, which is a little bit more, quite a bit more difficult actually to have access to the railroad there. And Dave, those other two pieces, what's that funny looking one? Uh, this one? Yeah. This one and this one are both owned by Concord Monitor. Okay. And this one here is um, actually a little sort of landlocked thing. I think it's owned by uh, one of the Alosas. I think it's less than an acre. Yeah. Pretty small, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, um, and just so you folks understand, the extension of that Whitney Road to s that goes through this property here, the former, uh, well, we just call it the Recycling Cooperative, that was approved by the state as well as the city, ready to go. And they're willing to give up that right away for free to the city. Um, all the city has to do is ask. And um, they're willing to give it up. And all the easements which would allow that Whitney Road to be brought down to here, are, uh, they're already in the city hall, uh, ready to be signed from what I understand. Okay. We're gonna go back to the agenda for a minute um, and talk about why, why we're here today. Um, we, um, sorry, as, actually that's a good, that's a good one to look at. So as, as Dave was mentioning, the, um, the area that we have under control is the 42 acres with 9.8 acres currently zoned, uh, urban commercial and the rest is industrial. And until recently the urban commercial was restricted. There were, um, covenants placed on on the uh, land that could restrict the any individual use and then the total amount of development there. After the tannery, uh, the plans for the tannery site came forward uh, early this year and after several discussions with various counselors and city staff over the tax rate in, in Panacook in particular, um, we decided to submit a request to the city council to lift the covenants and to rezone the 4.9, uh, an additional 4.9 acres from industrial to commercial and so that we could pursue a supermarket for the site. The City Council voted in November to release the covenants based on the recommendations of the Planning Board, and I'll just repeat again what the Planning Board had asked for. So this comes directly from the Planning Board recommendations in that they had recommended releasing the covenants, but not to rezone any property until the petitioner, us, the Rossios, returned with the master plan for the site generated with participation and input from the community. And so while we had submitted a, set, a concept plan with our request, we're going to use your input today to do a new master plan for the site. And the input you provide will also help us to decide, in the city to decide, what is the right zone for the area and how big should that commercial zone be. Um, we also wanted to talk about uh, Route 4 and Whitney Road just briefly because it's out there. I don't know if it came up at the site plan, uh, excuse me, at the site walk. But um, it is a, an intersection that's right next door. It does serve as the front door uh, to Whitney Road, as well as Old Boyce Road in Canterbury. And it's been a concern for many years to all the commuters in the area, as well as all the residents who live on both sides or the people who work on both sides, there's more businesses than residents on both sides in Canterbury and in Concord, and as well as the Boswin folks who come down from Route 4, Salisbury, everybody who travels through the intersection knows that it is, it is a very tough intersection. And a project to add a traffic signal to that intersection has been in the capital improvement program for the city of Concord since the intersection was built in the late 1980s. Uh, since then, developments along Whitney Road have paid impact fees. The extra mart development added a right turn lane on Route 4 as well as paying $80,000 in impact fees. And the intersection, however, though, is in the jurisdiction of the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. So while it's in the city of Concord, it's a DOT maintained and uh, managed intersection. And they won't install a traffic signal there until certain criteria, known as traffic signal warrants, until those criteria are met. The extra mark traffic study showed that a traffic signal at the intersection wasn't warranted at the time that they were uh, gonna go in there. Now that was several years ago. Um, DOT also expressed a concern at that time that in order to put in a traffic signal or a roundabout or to do any improvement there would have to include widening Route 4 to, up to four lanes. 
Also, they talked about moving the ramps as part of a project. So as a result, the current estimate for project at the intersection is well over $2 million. And through the 10-year process, uh, the Central New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission has been advocating for the state to include a project at the intersection, and it's been over the last several iterations, so for many years. In the current draft 10-year process, uh, we've seen more testimony provided in support of a project. We personally testified as well. And we now believe that Representative Shirtliff, Senator Feltis, uh, and Executive Councilor Valinsky, who lives in East Concord, are well aware of the need for a project at the intersection and will be trying to get a project into the 10-year plan. The second subject is the Whitney Road extension, which Dave already touched on. And um, as he mentioned, it currently extends past Willowbrader, and uh, there's a waterline easement that extends all the way down to Sewell's Falls Road, which is about a mile and a quarter. Uh, again, in the Capital Improvements Program, there is a project to extend Whitney Road along the corridor, and it would provide access to 145 acres. That's the, those two large tracts we talked about already, the 40 acres owned by the co-op, and another 100 or so owned by newspapers of New England. Most of that is zoned industrial with a very small segment zoned residential <coughs> on the uh, Riverland Bluff. But we don't have any ownership or control of any land in that corridor. And we don't think that any of the development that, that we're proposing or talking about doing for the, our project will in any way impact the corridor. Um, but it is out there as a project that's going on in the neighborhood and certainly when and if um, the intersection is looked at, the uh, extension and any traffic on that extension of Whitney Road would be incorporated into the design of the intersection. So these are issues that we, we're sure you might have other questions about and we want to be able to answer those questions, but we think that maybe if we can talk about those things after the meeting, after the planning exercises in particular, this way we can spend the time that we have today <laughs> focusing on the master planning effort. So with that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Rob Hoover from TF Moran. He's a nationally recognized landscape architect and land planner. And what he's going to be doing is going through a planning exercise. Um, he, by the way, is very active in his local government and has served as many years for the planning board chair in Georgetown, Massachusetts. So thank you, Rob. Thank you. So my name is Rob Hoover. And I'm curious, how many people here have been through a charrette, this kind of process, before? Raise your hands. So. So maybe half of you are familiar. <laughs> what I am going to explain is probably I want to talk to those people um, who have not been through this process before, um, because all of you that have been, you, you probably get this right from the get-go. But this is going to be about 45 minutes, and it's really, <clears throat> it's really a brainstorming session. Uh, it's really important. There's no right or wrong in this. Um, these are about ideas, your ideas. Uh, it's about hopefully having fun, and we have some uh, plans on the, on the tables in front of you uh, where we're going to do some drawing on those plans, and I'm looking at the young man over there in the blue coat, and I bet he's going to have some fun with some of those pencils and pens. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that's the point of it, and I can't stress enough, this is, this is not to be, you know, this is about having fun, and it's about ideas. So with that, I'll give you just an overview of what I'm going to cover. And what we're going to do first is we're going to identify potential land uses. And I see somebody has already started a list here of probably Lori. And um, so we're going to be adding to this based on ideas that you folks have. Again, nothing right or wrong. It's just land use ideas that you may think of. We're going to add them to this. Then after that, we're going to, by taking just raising hands, we're going to try to prioritize them to try to get a sense of, from all of you on this list, what seems to be the most important, what rises to the top, what, what doesn't rise to the top. And then uh, after we do that, um, I'm going to show you probably right here uh, what this process of on your table, how you're going to be working, what you're going to be doing, how you're going to go through the process. I'll actually take you through it very quickly as sort of a trial run. And then we're going to go to work. We're going to walk around and help whoever needs help and, and whatnot to develop your own plan. And then uh, towards the end, we'll wrap it up where if you're comfortable having somebody um, from your table uh, just take one of the plans you've come up with at the end as sort of your conceptual diagrammatic master plan uh, and just give a two-minute 
highlight of what, what it is that you've, you've produced to everybody. And then that would be um, the, the uh, conclusion to that part of the process. So with that, um, on the, uh, going to the exercise here of uses. Now you already have uses listed in front of you on, it's those color diagrams, those, those, um, those circles, those blobs. And, <laughs> so what I'd like to do is some of those I think that are already on there, for example, the supermarkets on there, but what's listed here is liquor store, fast food restaurant, sit down restaurant, urgent care center, bank, car wash, movie theater. Are there other ideas uh, that people have that they came here with that they consider, you know, want to put up there on the, on the table? And if not, then I'm going to make sure that the ones we've got in the plan in front of us are covered. But, hmm? Sure. Retail? Okay. Hotel. 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 There's nothing right or wrong. Don't edit yourself. <laughs> Excuse me? Are we voting? I'm sorry. Ms. Not yet. We're just okay. putting up. Um, office is geared towards fiber optics. Office. High tech. High tech office space. Good one. Any others? I know kind of urgent well. care, but I was thinking like um, like Horseshoe Pond kind of extension of already our operating hospital. What would we call that? It's like medical office. Medical office? Yeah. Urgent care. Yeah. Urgent well, care? Yeah. Oh. Urgent care is like convenient MD. Right, we don't. Right. If you want, <laughs> if you want like more doctor's office, 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 such as medical office. Okay. Yes. The Horseshoe Pond also has elderly housing. Is that what you had in mind? No. Horseshoe Pond doesn't have it. Horseshoe Pond's their only conference center. On the other side. The old Phage Bell building yeah, has that. It's true. Yeah, it's no. I'm going to add elderly help. But you're talking about Columbia Hospital. I'm not sure about the hospital. Like the Cinema? That's one that I would like. What about like a SNU like satellite, like our you know UNH satellite out here? Education? Yeah. Continued education. Continuing ed? So I would say that as we go through this, if you have additional ones that you want to, you know, add to your own table when we get into that, you know, have at it again. This is about having fun and just generating some ideas. So um, what I'd like to do is try to prioritize these. Doesn't mean you have to vote for them, but what I'm going to do is take a, take hands, and I'm just going to go through the list. How many people would like supermarket? Two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think I got fourteen. This is not a perfect science, so. <laughs> All right, fourteen. Liquor store. One, two, three, four, five. Fast food restaurant. Two, three, four, five. I know. You guys have to stay. You're always making us have to stay. No. Sit down restaurant. I'm hungry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's about one. 
urgent care center. Depends on what, what company you put in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If it's a satellite or a hospital, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about that. <laughs> um, My husband is a the president there. So. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. One, right. two, three. Yeah. 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 Car wash. One. Movie theater. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess movie theater and cinema. We did have that. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, retail. One, two, what kind of retail? Three. Is the question. What do you want to add some specifics or just a broad brush of retail? Like Home Depot or something. Home Depot. So I'm going to call that, for lack of a better term, big box. Yeah. Yeah, lumber yard, like something like a BJ's or something like that. Okay. So store. big box retail. How many for that? One, two, three, four. There's one more. Did nope, you get one? No, no, didn't we? No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You guys didn't? No, 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 I'm sure. All right. Um, hotel. How about small scale retail, too? Please, say again. Small scale retail, also? Yep. Locally owned, maybe? Can you give me an example? Oh, that's just me speaking. When you say local? Well, the sort of thing that a, maybe a hair spot would be in. Okay. Coffee shop yeah, or the, the, space for the so you're thinking like a strip mall. Okay. Yeah. So small but scale retail in, in that vein. How many would like to see that use? One, two, three. Uh, okay, hotel. One, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Office high tech. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, medical office building, doctor's office. One, two, three, four. Four. Elderly housing? No. 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 Zero? No. Any kind of housing? I'm still fighting that. No. Zero. I'm still fighting that logic. And then education. Continuing education. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right, so. Fitness center? It's great. All right. I would get my vote. Yes. How many spin signs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay, so now. Did these Sharpies destroy these boards? Probably. Yeah, all right, I'm not going to use it. Hard to take them off. You want a different color? Is there a red one? As long as it says dry erase, dry erase. Think you're good. good to go. We can take that off. Yeah. Okay, so, so here's one. Here's <coughs> one. Um, Eleven looks like two. Seven. Three. Six, four, four, four. Some more colors for you to play with now. Six, thank you. Four, five. Five is five. Five is five. Five is five. Four, six. 
So that's my satellite location story. Yes. <laughs> okay, three is seven. It takes a little brain there to go back. Yep. Uh, seven is three, and then the last one is eight. Ready to get the big bucks. All right. Did I forget it? All right. Okay. Um, so. This is for your information. This is going to be recorded. If you come up with any other ideas while you're working in, in your groups at your table, have at it, put it down. Um, what we're going to, what I want to do now is I just want to, um, you don't have to follow this list in its order. This is as much for taking home to the, uh, to the Rossios for, for, for their information for, for working with the city um, as it is for you folks. So, you have in front of you, you have this base plan, I believe, at your desk. And I'm going to take this one up. Um, can you see over here if I go over here? Yeah, this is equal opportunity. I should come over. Just, I just want to highlight um, step one, what you're going to, uh, what you probably already know from walking out at the site, but is is to come up with a, a buildable area, a workable area. It's kind of an opportunities constraints. What the site will give you are also the opportunities, they're also the constraints. And what I mean by that is, so here you have the existing gas station. Here you have that slope in the ravine. So this is a no-build zone. Here you have the main circulation system, which you have these views coming in and going out. Here is your access way coming into the property. And then you have the industrial um, project there. So in effect, I think it's fair to say that you're, what you're working with for your buildable area is something like this. And it's, it's as simple as that. And then <clears throat> you have those bubbles in front of you. And what I wanted to, this is a re reduction, but if you look at the bubbles, you'll notice that underneath the color, are the actual uh, buildings and associated parking. The reason they're in bubbles is so that you don't get stuck trying to actually make this thing work. The idea is to just put these bubbles down where you think they may work for you. Use the tracing paper that you all have. Does everybody have tracing paper? Yes, please have it. I'm wondering if, um, I, I kind of wish that the zoning district lines were on the map, and the districts that are there and the area that they're asking for, um, for the rezoning were, were indicated, because the Rossios are asking for a very specific amount of area um, to be rezoned. And so I, I'm just wondering if it's going to be helpful if we're putting some of these boxes in the areas that the Rossios are right now proposing is going to remain industrial. I, so because when we look when we move forward looking at what should this be, that if we're if we're proposing now that we're thinking that this whole thing might be all of some of these uses, that's an entirely different um, that's an entirely different proposal than what we have at the board level right now. David, I don't mean to put you on the spot. But no, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind chatting about this. Um, there is a proposal 
uh, or there was a proposal we made to the um, planning board, or excuse me, to the city council, and they referred to the planning board. And it was sort of two halves of that. One was to relieve the covenants, and the other was to rezone an additional approximately five acres of land from uh, the CU. Uh, originally, we were considering a different district, um, making it instead of 10 acres, roughly 15 acres. Now, we the covenant lifting portion of that has been done. That's completed and voted on by the city council. So what remains is then, outstanding anyway, is this request that we had to rezone an additional five acres on top of the 10 acres that we uh, have now, which is commercially zoned. And what we're doing though now, instead of saying we're acting on the five acres or trying to decide what would fit in the five acres of additional land, what we're, we've decided is we're not gonna put any zoning lines on the plan and we're not gonna be bound then, or, the, or essentially the people here are discussing this, shouldn't be bound by our previous request to add five acres of land because it may be more commercial land which is appropriate for this location. And that's based on some discussions I've had with, with city councilmen who said, you know, don't be limited by this previous request. Figure out really what the people want here and we'll go try to adjust the zoning line after this meeting. So, I, I, so I, the, thinking, I, the, the thinking was, piggybacking on that, was that uh, at this stage of the game, to add zoning lines and to try to work within those zoning lines would force the group to start to get like this and not be able to step back and just say, this is what we would like for this property. This is what we would like. So, it's trying to work at the level where this process is first meeting the public. And then, perhaps once there's a sense of where that may go, uh, then it would be a discussion to start to fine tune it, I think, at the level that you're talking about. Um, I think it's important for people to rec realize at this stage in terms of the economic impact and the fiscal impact. So right now, there's a significant amount of this property that's zoned industrial, and that has a certain utility based on the location of the railroad lines and highways, and uh, just the expectation from, from the master plan uh, of what, how this area would be used. So uh, I think that's fine if we want to broaden the conversation about how this parcel should be used, but people should be aware that there may be a trade-off with land that's currently zoned industrial, and that how much of that land is currently zoned industrial. And to draw sort of arbitrary lines, to, you know, I think people should realize, okay, this, this suggestion is removing 15 acres of industrial, or this suggestion is, is removing all of the industrial. Um, so right now, there's, well, there's, there's lines of, of what, what the expectation is that so how So how about this? What if one of the uses that isn't, wasn't put up there, which I think is great, should have been put up there, is industrial? Yeah. And, then, and, then, and, then it's, and then it's covered where, let's not worry about where that industrial goes right now, but the fact that, I think this is a great point you're making, and so um, I, I'm going to add industrial back up there because it's a, it's a absolute, I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, is this in the current plot that we've already looked at, the site, the property site? Yeah, that's in there, yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, what was you understand my question? The zone? The zoning that she's talking about, the, you know, expanding, changing the zone, that's so in, this, that, in this map site. This is, um, well, we have, a, we have a plan, I think, that might be useful, which shows, you know, this one, this one will show it. Yeah, this one's a little bigger. We'll get it's the yet. same scale. Yeah. We can maybe put it up next to that one if that helps. Sure. Yep. Alright, I can sort of, yeah, instead of talk, talking about a plan, I can point to a plan. So, I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to get out of the way. Could you put up your point to it? that you presented in the past also? So, everybody see this all right? So this was the entire 42 acres, which is comprised of two tracts of land. One is a 10-acre piece here, which the corner is the gas station, and then the remainder there. So today, the zoning line is this one, roughly 10 acres 
CU, which is City of Concord's Urban Commercial District. The remainder is industrial. They call it I. The most recent request that we were speaking of to add another five acres um, was this line, which we're sort of backing away from and trying to decide is that the best line or is there another line? We'll, we'll find out a little more after today. So hopefully that's, I don't know if you've got a pen I can mark on it if you like. Yeah, there you go. All right, so zone line today is that. CU, and the rest is I. I am. Uh, I am? All right. In. So CU and industrial. Does that make sense? Or to answer your question? I would want to see the plan. Okay. Yeah. What she's telling us, yep. if we're gonna sort of go by this, then we'd have to know what IU can be done in IN and what can be done in CU. You know? well, that, that, that's that's no, why we don't want to. That's why I don't think it makes sense either. Well, I think, but I think the point that Heather's bringing up is really important. She, I think what I'm hearing is that it's important that everybody understands that you have these two zones today, and if you were to say there's no industrial at all, you need to be aware that you're giving up industrial because there's a portion here that's zoned industrial, and you will lose that as a tax base potential. So I think it's I think it's information. That is what is being put on the table. Yeah, I'm not suggesting anyone try to fit their concepts into those lines. It's just a matter of being aware, and, and I wasn't aware that that you all had decided to uh, change the, the I don't want to say the scope, but um, the the intent really. Because originally I thought the intent was to figure out what could go in this area or how it could be arranged. This roughly maybe it's not ten, maybe it's you know fifteen or. Whatever, um, so so that makes sense, and and I would kind of advocate maybe not putting up the plan that they had proposed because I think that will even more influence well, that, people. Yeah, we have the plan, but yeah. the point was that we weren't trying to influence what yeah, everybody was doing by showing you the plan again. <laughs> yeah, open it up. And, and it's you know I mean this this is what we had shown at the city council. Okay, so the idea now is you're supposed to forget about that and do your own plan. That, that was the idea. All the yellow buildings were The yellow industrial. buildings are, are industrial. industrial. This was our plan. This is the additional five acres of commercial. So this is 15 acres of commercial, and the rest is all industrial. Well, we're not supposed to show you this, because you're supposed to come up with your yes. own plan. So that's why that's why we have a blank slate. Right. Just, are we going to do a show of hands on industrial? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> How many on industrial? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Taxes. Industrial. The taxes. Six. Taxes. All right, well, the commercial has taxes, taxes too, though. Well, that's I mean, what I was thinking. You're, you're generating well, more yeah. taxes, actually, in commercial. But that's, yeah. While they're chatting about it, maybe we can put <laughs> up fine. put up the chart. chart. Yeah, we'll have to find that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that well, going well, and we'll find it. While you folks are starting, we, we created a summary of the assessments of these different okay. types of yeah. uses. It might be so, useful for you both. So what we're going to do, so what I wanted to show how we're going to do this. We have the ability. So, all right. so everyone, here's, here's, here's what you've got for the uh, drawing that's on your table, and it's the same scale. You can do one of two things. You can cut these out if you want. We have scissors, or you can simply eyeball the size, which references appropriate use. We're just going to draw the lines on the paper and then put those on. That's that's it. That's exactly it. That's but, the process. But every one of those bubbles can be reconfigured. The parking lot depends on where you put it on here. Yeah, that's why. What the I bubbles are like just a general. Like, correct. Like a, correct. What I wanted to show you is what one of these things could look like. I mean, use your tracing paper. Don't think you have to get it right the first time. Just stop. No, no, we'll, you know, use it just like that. Recently, sorry to interrupt you folks, but a question came up recently about 
Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to respond to a question that came up recently about how big a supermarket is uh, 45,000, I think is the one we have there. Just to sort of put things in perspective, um, the supermarket that was recently constructed in Hookset at Market Basket, which you can see from the Interstate Highway, was um, 79,000 square feet. Um, and we have three supermarkets in uh, Fort Eddy Road, and those range from 50 to 55,000 square feet in size. Just to kind of get a feel for maybe what so you have the there in front of you. Market Basket on Fishville, uh, maybe, you know, Fort Eddy is 50. Uh, I think that one's 45 or so, and I think Hannaford might be a little bigger. Slightly smaller. I think it's more along the 60,000 square foot size, maybe even 50,000. 50, and, and just so... <laughs> And we do have here some information if you guys wanted to see as a question come up, Mr. Newell, about what's a relative assessment for different uses in the town. This will give you an idea, some folks. So, for example, I just didn't put a one square foot, but in building size, this is what the specific uses relate to in assessments in our town. This is sort of an average. So we only want retail. Some question about some question about what's feasible too. I understand. Yeah. Right. You above all would know that. Right. You would know. Call it, uh, call it a wrap. You all, um, everybody ready? Call it a wrap. Time's up. Time's done. As they say, pencils down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what? What I'd like to do? I need everybody's attention, please. You guys all set? You guys ready? I'll put in what, what we're gonna, oh, pizza showed up. Yeah. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. If they want to go grab a piece of water, talk to Okay, yeah. So, remember, there's, not, yeah. there's no right or wrong in any of this. If you want to go get a piece of pizza, get a piece of pizza. We're going to start the review process. So, with that said, um, who wants to go first? What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it up. And then, if you would simply, you know, in a minute, just what the basics are for this plan, for this diagram. Okay. We were uh, thinking about still keeping some of this property industrial, because I know it's been on the market for a long time in the industrial world, but we didn't necessarily want to make it all commercial. So we went with a supermarket, which is about the size of Canniford, without a pharmacy. We went with something possibly like a sit-down restaurant, uh, a small retail shop that's 13,000 feet, which would be like a Verizon and then the liquor store. Also including a, a bus stop, so our elderly and Pentecook folks can get into the big grocery store. So it would be like <coughs> that's at the Briar Pike place. And then um, some sidewalk maintenance, because our sidewalks don't get there. David, is this being recorded, what's being said, so we have access to what's being said? Uh, okay, thank you. A nod. <laughs> okay, thank you. Welcome. You guys next? Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> I'm going to stand in back here so they all can see. Oh, well, well, you can't see. So that the camera can see, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Can you see it, the camera? Yeah. Well, okay. No, that's Try okay. We can this. hear you. Yeah. All right. Well, how about if you want to, could you come up here? Yeah, sure. You to? Thanks. I think might be able to. Why are you sure? <laughs> okay, full disclosure, I'm the spy from Boscoan, but... Uh, 
they asked me if I'd do this. So here I am back in the corner. We have the grocery store because just like retail does, we're doing the same thing. Make you drive by everything to get what you want. So we put that, then we put the liquor store back here also. Fast food, we put up the front of the property because people are coming off the interstate or they're going wherever and those people are just gonna be in, out, grab their burger, use the restroom, whatever. Uh, everybody else, we're gonna try to get them in. Now these customers also will probably go to the liquor store or may because you see an awful lot of that with the, the summer complaints and the, you know, whoever that's headed north. Uh, over here we had retail and we also stuck some office space in with the retail. Hopefully one's upstairs, downstairs. Uh, who else we got over here? It's upside down. Is it oh, no. That isn't your fault. I gotta take my glasses off so I can see. You want mine? <laughs> no, we have a bank and some more retail over in this corner. And this is where the gas station is over here. <coughs> so we think we've taken it. It's gonna be a pretty busy lot with everything we've got on there. And we are not assuming that this is going to be not be able to do these uses because, quite honestly, I think when the city council sees something that's viable, okay, we'll rezone this. And one thing about a city council, how often do they meet, Alan? Once a month. Once a month. So that you get 12 bites of the apple to change the zoning. If you're a town, you get one bite of the apple at town meeting. And then you've got to convince the majority of the voters, whoever shows up, that whatever you want to do with zoning is a good idea. Concord, you've only got a dozen people you've got to convince. So there's a big difference in trying to get something changed here and trying to get it changed a quarter of a mile up the street. <laughs> so we, this is what we came up with for a concept, and there it is for what it's worth. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would you be willing to hold this? Joe, you want to do it? I'll hold it. Um, so, working from the Dunkin' Donuts sit down restaurant, uh, two more retails all of it close to the front of the lot. Grocery store, the smaller of the two, and then a high, little high-tech office park back here. Maybe one of the buildings is a high-tech incubator, right? As these little companies a year or two, if they succeed, what are they gonna do? They're gonna need more space. They're gonna move into Pentecook and wherever and try to find realistically priced real estate. Uh, <coughs> The reason for this right here is there's a fiber optic line coming through here. There are not many in New Hampshire. There are certain high-tech businesses that absolutely need fiber optic, high-speed London companies. Okay? So one incubator, startups, well, startups don't survive. Those that do maybe move to here. When they get big, they take over and redevelop some other properties. Trying to think dynamically forward for, you know, 10 years from now. So a little bit driving next generation growth and a fair amount of just meeting basic needs that are driven by huge traffic counts. I mean, it's very natural to me that the development here will work on the traffic flow because that's the major natural asset right in this corner of these towns where they all come together. Do you want to add? Uh, you've stated everything. Well, great. We also that's put great. the bank over here on the Canterbury side. <laughs> <laughs> That's called thinking out of the box. <laughs> uh, where the parking is on uh, front Route 4 and you look over the parking to uh, the bank which is up on the, on the bluff and doesn't have access problems onto the road, <laughs> which this little light in the front has access problems in <laughs> the driveway. Yes? Uh, and financial services firm might also need the fiber optic line. That might be something that appeals to them also. That's great. Thank you. And then one more. Are we going to let this stand?
Also, like if you see where they're building market baskets and and other grocery stores, they like to be where they can be seen from the highway or the you know where the signs can be seen. So that's always in the back. Plus, everybody comes through to get to the market. Um, something like a UNH, but doesn't matter if it's them or not, is a good cooperative thing to get uh, a lot of people, younger people, and uh, to come here. And they would use the bakery, coffee shop, the bank, and the restaurant, and a liquor store just because people thought that was a good idea. And, and banks and bakeries and liquor stores would be seen by Route 4. And um, like uh, all of these could also use the uh, fiber optics, like a UNH or any of those um, yep. university things or. or um, yep. So, if you always see a hotel, there's always by a highway, markets are by a highway, and gyms, everybody would have to drive through. That's why we set up this. All right. Thank you. And yeah, we didn't do ours neat like those other ones. <laughs> so, that, that concludes this portion of it. And I, and I think, from my perspective, um, I think the exercise did exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, which kept it in the realm of ideas um, and uh, land uses. And uh, I think for that, it's, it, this has been a, a big success. Um, so I want to thank you for that part of it. And then I'm going to turn it back to you, I think. Yeah, I think so. But why don't we give everybody a round of applause for, for doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been different. So um, we really didn't know what to expect, really. I, my conclusions don't even matter because we didn't know what to expect in terms of how many people would be here, what you'd come up with, what we could do, what we couldn't do, what ideas would come out of this, what layouts would come out of this. Um, I think you, you, there was a question earlier about um, dollars per square foot in terms of taxes, so we did put this up there if, if there's any more thought on that. But basically the next step is that um, besides eating pizza and going home, 
We have a lot of work to do in terms of going back to the drawing board, looking at the plan that we submitted, and, and taking all of the input that we have here tonight in layout and uses, and resubmitting to the city. And then having a, an exchange with the city over what they think came out of the meeting, um, what in other information that they would like us to consider in doing that, and then, um, and then go forward to the planning board again for another meeting with them, because usually any kind of rezoning requests go before the planning board, then the planning board sends a recommendation off to the city council. So we have at least those two steps, planning board and city council, but I think we have a lot of work to do in, in the meantime of taking all of this stuff in and putting together a report. So if you did um, fill out one of these and you include your email, we will definitely send you the draft report and the draft um, master plan that we submit with that report. Um, we may submit more than one master plan. I'm not really sure how we're gonna proceed um, at this point, but the, there may be a plan or two in there, and then there's definitely gonna be a report and a write-up of what happened at the meeting. So if you wanna have a chance to give more input, more feedback, make sure we took into account the things that were said, that's your chance. Um, so I'm not trying to spam anybody by asking for email, but it's the easiest way to get you a copy of the report. And we're also going to post um, uh, some sort of version of the meeting on uh, Conquer TV so that people can look at that who weren't obviously able to, to be here today. Um, but I think this might be a good time for questions. If anybody has any questions. Yeah. I just wanted to ask one question. Of all the plans that we came up with, how many included, how many retain any industrial space here at all? Yours did. Just one. Just one, I thought. You know, I, I think if the your industrial land was easy access to the railroad, we might be having a different conversation about that. Mm -hmm. Down further on, the co-op land that's way that up. land yeah. does have easy access to the railroad. Yeah. So that has something that 99% of the industrial land that's available in New Hampshire does not have. What, what ours has that theirs doesn't have is the visibility to the highway. So for that, that might make you lean more towards commercial for that reason. But, you know, that's what the purpose of the meeting was. And maybe it's a mixture. If Whitney Road continued and say that little, what do they call that? Uh, you know, like if it was the tip of Florida, the tip of the property remained industrial and Whitney Road continued and became industrial, that could still be you know, viable industrial land also. Right, that seems to make more sense to me. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. that's on the cash, the, the right. Right. right, yep, some of the land you can see from the highway as you go further down, but, but then you're getting further away from the main traffic line, so it doesn't, it's not really commercially viable to, to put, it's not viable, to, feasible, necessarily, to put commercial land further down Whitney Road. Mm -hmm. That's maybe even more office park, more industrial or, um, dare I say it, residential, but I, that's all for somebody else to decide when they go to look at the master planning for those, you know, 180 acres that, that's down there. Excuse me, 140 acres. As the flops, flops on, the, um, on the river and so forth. We do have some of those pictures, by the way. And we have some examples of other photos that were done by TF Moran, but we knew that this would take a lot of time and we didn't want to take away from this. So, um, you know, we, we do appreciate your time and for all those who came out in the cold day, um, we do have coffee and we have pizza. So, um, anybody else? Any other questions? Oh, me again. I, I just want to say, as, a, as a, from my own town, from being on the planning board for so long, I just appreciate when people are involved in the town in their, right. their area. And just to see this group here is, is I tip my hat to you because it's, not, it's not common. Yeah. And there's multiple towns, actually. Yes, yes, correct, here. correct. Yeah, this yeah. isn't just one. <laughs> it's, it's a regional location, so it ends up in multiple towns. Yeah. But, so if this goes successfully through the city council and is begun, is that going to push the DOT to make some sort of improvement to the intersection out here? Out here? Well, we're, we've actually been looking at all that concurrently because honestly, right now, there's a problem at the intersection. 
before we do anything else, there's already a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and it already meets certain warrants if you look at it one way, and, and that I actually talked to Bill Lambert today while he was here, because he's at the, at the DOT. Um, but it, the funding is not there for it right now, so we're hoping to get it at least focused on, have it get in the plan, have there be a, maybe a time frame in there. We start working on that project, and, and hopefully the two come together to get, you know, at the same time. Um, yeah. The only point I want to make is if you do have a hotel here, a restaurant here, a bank here, all of that is, is certainly going to uh, be convincing for people that want to go down here and do industrial stuff because then things will be right here. Yep. Like, you know, especially depending on what kind of industrial thing it is, they, they're going to need a hotel to put people up that are visiting the industrial complex. They're going to need the bank. They're going to need all of this stuff. So if this is here, then they can build off of that. Mm -hmm. Industrial here won't convince anybody to build more industrial down there. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. You get this all approved and the road's all done and you get ready to build. Who makes the decision of who, like, you have demolished come in? Do they make the decision of who they hire to do the site work? the construction, or is that something you guys will have an input in? Depends on how that's arranged. Because um, it would be nice to keep as much of it, of it, excuse me, in the state of New Hampshire to help everybody. Right. Embrace. Right. 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 I mean, we, you know, we, we've done personally a lot of work ourselves here. Right. Right. We certainly have hired a lot of local contractors um, to do our work here. So I, I would hope that the same would happen over there. But depending upon how it's arranged, you, you have the land lease that was done, say, with the extra mark. Um, do you know who did the contract, the construction there? I know Merrill Construction did the uh, water and sewer. They did all the site work. Yeah, they yep. did, oh, they did the site work. Yep. Um, we had a couple of guys from Canterbury did, did some other site work out there. So it you know, may depend on, upon what specialties they're looking for. But you don't want to guess. lose a grocery store over whether somebody here or something. You wouldn't want to lose the whole thing over right. there. So. Right, but still. Well, no, but it would be nice to no, keep it in the state yeah. of New Hampshire and generate. I mean, my husband works construction in the state of New Hampshire, and he's butting against all these other companies coming in from Vermont, Massachusetts. So they're starting to lose bids because we're bringing in from other people. That's taking away from our family income and everybody else that, no, I that, that. Uh, you know, that needs to have to live, you know? That's the only reason I asked. No, it's just nice you. to know where we're, how it generates, of starting from the ground up. Right. I know they go out and bid on it. I'm not, you right. know. Okay. Is there, I do. Um, I promised my neighbor that I would say to the group that coming out of Old Boys Road across the intersection, it takes he waits seven to eight minutes mm -hmm. in the morning during commuting hours to be able to turn left. Oh, at least. Able, at least. Yeah. To, in order to find it, a gap in the traffic big enough to safely go left and get right. on the highway. Right. He wanted me to mention that. Okay. <laughs> Put it in the public record. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay. if, if the state plan is six years out and that's the best you can do with all of what's going on with right. Belinsky and Shriplet and those guys, where does that leave you? There must be another way that. Um, Build the supermarket. Does the supermarket absorb that? Um, in, in other words, typically, the, uh, an end user would, would be paying impact fees. They'd be doing a traffic study. They'd be right. potentially they, building it. Okay. Would they, would they be doing less than the two million? Just with well, the that's gap? that's the right. That's the Couple question. Of lanes and a light I, and I think that's the thing we have to off you go. we have to see how that works because they obviously when they build it they want the customers to come and they want the customers to be able to get there and to be able to leave. So they're going to be invested in that process as well. It always <laughs> is that way. Just typically, a supermarket is being uh, built and they have their own driveway. You know, they're not being going onto a city road, which is then going onto a state road. They have their own driveway, and they want to put in the signal, they put the signal in. So this is a little different, and the project has grown. Mm -hmm. So, but, but definitely the two are going to have to happen. The signal 
people or a roundabout would have to happen before a supermarket would open. That size development, you'd have to have the control at the high, at the intersection. Yeah. Or they wouldn't be able to get in and out. So, anybody else? Dave, did you want to add anything? Did I forget anything? No, I think you're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they always leave it to us, don't they? are not running out of pizza yet. Great. So we have lots of pizza, and we really, 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 really appreciate all your time. Um, we know this was an unusual exercise. It certainly was not your typical planning board meeting, and um, this is great input, and uh, we really appreciate that. So thanks for thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.